Uh, in the last class, we were discussing about uh, the JFET characteristics. We have seen the construction and we have seen how the output characteristics look like. Uh, please look at this diagram. Please recall that the output characteristics is like this. It has an ohmic region in which it, the device acts like between the drain and the source, the device acts like uh, voltage dependent resistance. It's a very interesting device. Uh, the with increased negative potential at the gate with respect to the source, you find that the resistivity increases. And beyond certain voltage, the current tends to be constant and you have, uh, it acts like a constant current source. The, the current saturates because of pinching off of the uh, drain to source channel. The semiconductor channel gets pinched off of the carriers, the, the free charges and as a result the resistivity increases and the, uh, the current attains some saturation level the channel, channel gets saturated of the, I mean the current saturates beyond certain voltage. That is because of the differential voltage difference between the drain and source. When VGS is about minus 1 volt, V drain to source may be more negative, would be more negative and because of which the channel gets pinched off and uh, uh, I mean the uh, the free charge particles remain constant and as a result the current remains constant beyond certain, certain voltage level. As a result the current saturates in this fashion. And please note that when you operate in this region say beyond certain voltage or like 3 or 4 volts typically, you can see that the device acts like a constant current source. What is a constant current source? A constant current source is, uh, uh, is one which gives you constant current with different loads, with varied uh, resistances, load resistances. It means that with varied voltage, terminal voltage, it drives constant current. So please note that in this particular characteristics, between 5 to 20 volts, so it acts like a constant current source, irrespective of the voltage. If this is say 5 milliamperes is the current here, and if you pass it through 1 kilo ohm resistance, it produces 5 volts and the current is still 5 milliamperes. If you pass it through a 4 kilo ohm resistance, the voltage drop across the terminals would be 20 volts and still the current is 5 milliamperes and that is how it remains as a constant current source. Very interestingly, this constant current is a function of the gate to source voltage. Therefore, the device acts like a constant current source and with the current being a function of gate to source potential. This is what is very interesting for us. 
So if this source now, uh, if you pass this current through a large resistance, you will have a large voltage drop across it. And with a small gate to source potential, you will find good amount of appreciable amount of current variation. And when you pass this current variation through a large load resistance, you will have a large voltage drop across this resistance. And that is responsible for amplification. Hence, a JFET can be used as an amplifier. Okay, in general, it can be used as a voltage dependent current source. Okay. Now, please note that so this re region is known as the ohmic region where it acts like a resistance. And this region is a saturation region where we use it as a constant voltage dependent current source and that is responsible for amplification. So, for amplification application, you operate the FET in this region. Whereas, for a voltage dependent resistant resistance application, you use it in this region. Typically, in applications like automatic gain control in your home receiving sets, like either a TV receiving set or a radio receiving set, you may be close to a transmitter, still it should be able to work and you may be far away from the transmitter, still it should be able to work, the receiving set should be able to work. Therefore, the receiving set should have an automatic gain control within itself. And in such applications, the voltage dependent resistance can be used. Suppose you use a potential divider, the input is applied to a potential divider and you take the output from the potential divider from the center tap. And now if the series resistance is increased, you will have low voltage at the output when the series resistance is increased like this in a potential divider, you apply an input and say this is the output. If the series resistance, let me call it as parallel resistance, the series resistance. If the series resistance increases, now the output so decreases. So if you use this as a, uh, in, as a uh, voltage dependent resistance in series and if you make it dependent on the output voltage strength, you can see that this resistance increases with large output voltage. So that way, you can have a voltage dependent ratio here. And that is responsible for automatic gain control. So this is what is uh, typically used in receivers, receiving sets to provide wide dynamic range to be for the receiving set to be able to work with different levels of input signal strength, signal voltage or signal power. So in such applications like automatic gain control, this voltage dependent resistance can be used and a FET can be used for this purpose. So this is about the output characteristics which is between the drain to source voltage and the drain current. And when VGS is equal to 0, IDSS is the current. Now, the how this drain current depends on VGS. It can be shown that the drain current depends on the VGS according to this expression. It is IDSS into 1 minus VGS by VP whole square. When VGS is 0, ID is equal to IDSS. So that means this current. So with this current as a parameter, so this expression can be written in this form. Please note that it is not a linear relationship. In general, it is a square law relationship. But please note that for small signal strengths, it can be linearized. We will discuss about it later on. 
and this IDSS on what does it depend? It depends on the construction of the fat, the size of the fat, the doping concentration and so on. This is the expression. Now, how does the current depend uh, directly on VGS? So, this is the relationship as I said and now if we plot this ID versus VGS, that means the gate to source potential as the when you view it as the input side and the drain to source as the output side, it is a transfer characteristics between the input quantity VGS and the output quantity drain current. So, what is the relationship between these two? So, let us look at that and the uh, this expression is given here itself. Let me plot this ID versus VGS plot here itself with this remaining as ID, Y axis remaining as ID and X axis instead of VDS. Now, I will represent VGS over here. When VGS is 0, ID is equal to IDSS, this is the point. And when VDS, VGS is minus 2 volts, for example, minus 2, minus 4, when it is minus 2 volts, IDSS is this much, this is the point. When it is minus 4, it is almost 0. So, the transfer characteristics is, is like this. Please note that VGS is negative and IDS is like this. This curve itself reflects how it depends, how ID depends on VGS which is for discrete values. Now, here it is a continuous plot and the mathematical relationship is like this. Now, once the characteristics is given to you, the transfer characteristic, this is known as the transfer characteristics as I already mentioned. It is because it is between the input and an input quantity and an output quantity. It is a transfer characteristic between an input quantity and an output quantity. Now, once VGS is given, for a particular VGS, ID is fixed. So, once ID is fixed, depending on VDS, you will have a uh, uh, depending on the supply voltage, you will have that particular VDS and then ID curve, ID point on these characteristics, okay. So, VGS defines ID in this particular case. Now, let me give you a quantitative relationship between the resistance or resistivity of this device in the ohmic region, the resistivity of the device as a function of VGS. Now, the current to voltage relationship from the current voltage relationship uh, that means ID and VGS for low values of um, VDS, for low value values of VDS, it can be obtained and it can be shown that the uh, voltage dependent resistance, the drain resistance, drain to source resistance can be expressed in this form R naught by 1 minus VGS by Vp whole square, where R naught is the resistance of this curve when Vgs is equal to Vp, I am sorry, when Vgs is equal to 0, that is this curve, when Vgs is equal to 0, this curve is applicable and this is like a resistance, current is Id is proportional to Vds. And if that resistance is R naught, then R d for any VGS, that means for minus 1, this is the corresponding resistance and for minus 2, this is the corresponding resistance and so on. This can be obtained from this plot, obviously because the, uh, the resistance is equivalent to VDS divided by IDS, ID, VDS divided by ID. This resistance is the corresponding VDS divided by IDSS and for other values, the, the, the ratio between IDSS and ID 
comes into picture and that ratio is this. Therefore, R d is equal to R naught by 1 minus V g s by V p whole square, where R naught is the resistivity or the uh, uh, resistance of the channel or J fed between the drain and source for V g s equal to 0. Okay. Now, let me go back to the characteristics once again. So, please note that when V g s is equal to V p, when V g s is equal to V p, I d is equal to 0. That means, at this point I d is equal to 0, this is I d, I d is equal to 0, when V g s is equal to V p. In this particular plot, V p is equal to minus 4 volts. And that voltage is known as pinch off voltage. What does it indicate? When you reverse bias the gate with respect to the source by this voltage, the channel is completely pinched off of the mobile or free charge carriers. That means if it is an N channel fed it is free of electrons, free electrons. Once there are no free electrons in an N channel, you do not have, uh, the, the only the minority carriers are responsible for current flow and, and you know that the minority carrier uh, concentration is very low. Therefore, the resistance of the channel would be of the order of uh, few, several tens of mega ohms in the case of a silicon fat. So, because of this reason, uh, reason that particular gate to source potential is known as the pinch off voltage. And Vp is negative in this particular case. Any questions? on the characteristics of FET. So what is the voltage? The voltage dependent resistance depends on VGS or VDS. Voltage dependent resistance. The question is for the voltage dependent resistance, what does it depend on? Is it the VGS or VDS? Please note that the channel itself is acting like a resistance and the channel or the voltage applied across the channel is VDS and the current flowing is ID. So, between for this voltage a proportionate amount of for this voltage a proportionate amount of current flows. So, between drain and source it acts like a resistance, but there is a third terminal whose potential decides what is the slope of this, what is the value. Therefore, VGS decides the resistance of the channel. As I mentioned, here the question is what is VP? As I mentioned, VP is the pinch of voltage. Pinch of voltage. Any other question? So can the voltage take any answer in the characteristic? Yeah, the question is whether this voltage can be reversed, VDS can be reversed. As I mentioned previously, when the construction is uh, symmetric and this is drain and this is source and you have here gate. So, it is an N channel FET and this is P channel over here, P channel over here. If this is symmetric, the naturally drain and source rules can be reversed. So, in a symmetric device, it acts in the same way. If there is some asymmetry in the construction of the FET and if the area of uh, drain is more than that of source and so on, there would be some difference in the characteristics when you reverse it. And in the ohmic region anyway, you are operating in the low voltage region. So, you are applying it is, uh, a supply here and you are getting some drain current over here. So, if it is positive supply, drain current will be positive and if the negative supply, drain current, current would be negative. For small voltages, <laughs> However, it is reversible, approximately reversible.
Well, here let me extend these characteristics. If you increase the voltage further, what happens is there would be breakdown occurring in the semiconductor and the current increases uh, tremendously with a slight increase in the potential in this fashion. So, this region is known as the breakdown region therefore. Now, let us look at the circuit symbol for FET. The circuit symbol is used is like this. If it is a an n channel FET, this is the circuit symbol used, this is the drain, this is the source and this is the gate. And this arrow, so into the channel indicates this is the channel and the arrow into the channel indicates that it is an n channel FET. On the other hand, if it is a p channel FET, the arrow is to the outside. This is the circuit symbol used. Now, what about the gate? We, we were talking about VGS and its influence on the channel in terms of changing the resistance and in terms of changing the current flowing through the channel, the saturation current that can be allowed through the channel. What about the gate's own current? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we operate the FET or the gate in the negative potential. So, the G, VGS is equal to 0 is the, uh, the highest potential we apply. So, usually we operate it in the negative voltage region. Hence, the gate to source and the gate to drain PN junction, the gate to drain and gate to source PN junction is reverse biased. Since it is a reverse biased PN junction, reverse biased in this fashion, is a reverse biased PN junction the current that flows out of the gate in the case of an n channel FET is equal to the reverse saturation current of a PN junction and which is of the order of a nano ampere in the case of a silicon J FET. And say if the say the voltage is say uh, 2 volts and the current is 1 nano ampere, so what is the equivalent resistance over here? It is 2000 mega ohms or 2 giga ohms. That is the order of the resistance that is offered between the gate and source. For all practical purposes, you can consider that it is an open circuit. So, it does not load, the circuit does not load. Therefore, the beauty is the device acts like a current source and the current is a function of VGS and if this is VGS, so VGS is not connected to the almost independent of the drain side, drain to source side, output side. So, whatever is the voltage you apply, it hardly loads it and uh, there is for, fact, for all practical purposes zero current flows in, but the output is affected by the input. Hence, it acts like a very high impedance or open circuit on the input side and on the output side, it acts like a current source which is pro whose cur current value is proportional to the gate to source potential. In fact, this is, uh, this is uh, what the equivalent circuit uh, of a FET looks like almost except for the channel resistance. 
this is how the it looks like I will discuss further about it later on. Now let us look at the characteristics, the construction and characteristics of a MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor MOSFET. As I explained earlier, it is a very important device which is very widely used in digital ICs particularly the CPU chips and memory chips. The uh, processors, the CPU processors, CPU chips like the Pentium chip has a millions of such MOSFETs embedded into the chip. So, they are performing, performing arithmetic logic functions and uh, arithmetic functions as well as some logic functions on the chip. And with millions of transistors, still the, still the power consumption is very low. So, that is the beauty of the MOSFETs. Power consumption is very low, but the and uh, at the same time, the size can be very low. So, that is, that is the reason why millions of such devices can be put onto a square inch of uh, chip area, wafer area. Now, let us see uh, how it can be constructed. Before that, so let me explain that uh, there are two types of MOSFETs possible. One is enhanced mode MOSFET and the other one is depletion mode MOSFET. There are two types possible and the construction is of a depletion mode MOSFET is like this. First you have a P type semiconductor substrate, a base into which you grow some N type region like this to form as a source and another N type region like this into the P type substrate itself to make the drain and this is P type substrate. And in between you grow an L N type channel. And then you have silicon oxide or silicon dioxide coating over it, a thin layer of silicon dioxide coating. It acts like an insulator silicon dioxide. So, this is the silicon dioxide coating over the channel. And you have so metallization over it. and take it out as a gate, as the gate. And you have metallization over here, so take it as the source. So, another metallization over here and take a lead out and it is the drain. So, this is the construction of a MOSFET. Typically, for the substrate also, some on the substrate also some ohmic contact is made and this is usually short circuited with the source and the thickness of the substrate is high. So, this is what is the construction of a depletion mode MOSFET is. Please note that the difference between a JFET and MOSFET is as shown here. In a JFET, 
we grow a p-type region over here to control the channel. Now a p-type uh, region is no longer used to control the channel. Instead, a, 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 a parallel plate arrangement is made and a potential is applied here and this potential now influences the channel characteristics. This field, field that is, uh, that appears between the channel end channel and the, and the gate affects the channel characteristics in almost uh, uh, in a similar way to that of the JFET. So that is why it is a FET, but it is a metal oxide semiconductor FET. Now, when the gate potential is 0, you know that you have an end channel over here between the source and drain and the device acts in the same way, it acts like a resistance up to certain potential like in the FET and after that the current saturates and the characteristics is like this. Why is it so? For the same reasons mentioned earlier, when you have a potential applied between the drain and source, the gate becomes more negative compared to the drain because the potential gets divided throughout this resistive region. If minus 2 volts is applied to drain, I mean plus 2 volts is applied to drain compared to the source, halfway through the voltage would be 1 volt compared to the source. And if the gate is now connected to the source, short circuited with the source, then the gate is uh, negatively biased compared to the drain. Please note that this gate is uh, more negatively biased with respect to the drain. As a result, this side of the end channel is negatively biased more negatively biased compared to the end channel. As a result, the free electrons that are present in the end type semiconductor over here are driven from the gate side to the P type substrate. And when they are driven, the free electrons are driven towards the P type substrate, the holes over here on the P side and these electrons recombine and as a result the free electron concentration goes down in the n type semiconductor over here and when the free electron concentration goes down naturally the resistivity increases towards the drain side and because of this re reason the uh, current attains some saturation level and it is maintained at that level beyond certain voltage. So that is why the characteristic is like this. And, and when you apply some negative potential to the gate with respect to the source, the gate has a, a field, negative field over here and because of which some recombination with the holes over here takes place and as a result the concentration, the free electron concentration goes down with the gate to source voltage. And when this goes down, the resistance of the channel increases and hence the characteristics is like this. When VGS is say minus 1, minus 2 volts, when VGS is minus 4 volts, so it is like this and at certain voltage like uh, say a minus 6 volts, the, this end channel is completely depleted of the free electrons and as a result the end channel resistivity increases and this end channel resistivity is very high hence ID is almost 0. 
i d is almost 0 over here. Okay. So, please note that the characteristics is similar to that of the uh, j fat. So, this is what is known as a depletion mode fat because we operate the fat in the depletion region when the channel is depleted of the carriers. And we you have the transfer characteristics similar to that of the j fat and it has a square law relationship like this. I d is then this is I d s s and at the pinch of voltage it goes down to 0. So, this is what is the characteristics of a, uh, of an enhanced of a depletion mode MOSFET is. Now, let me discuss about the construction of a, an enhanced mode MOSFET. An enhanced mode MOSFET also uses a substrate, say an N channel MOSFET uses a P type substrate So, we use two, we grow two n, n type regions over here and here and there is no channel uh, that is uh, made, that is prepared and you have a silicon dioxide layer over here, which is an insulating layer. And this is the gate. So, this is the metallization over here when, and this is source and with the metallization over here, this acts like the, like the drain. And in normal operation, when you have, say please note that as I mentioned earlier, the p-type is usually connected to the source, shorted with the source or to a uh, uh, three an ohmic contact. When the gate and source are short circuited, that means gate is maintained at the source potential between the drain and the source. If you connect some supply between the drain and the source, then do you expect current to flow through this? There is no channel appearing here. And there is an N type and this is P type and this is P type and the, this is N type. So, when this is the situation, so no current flows through the channel. So, zero current flows through the channel even when you apply some potential or uh, some voltage between the drain and source. Now, when you apply, if you apply some positive potential, to the gate compared to the source, then what happens is this positive potential creates a positive field in this channel region over here because of which it attracts the minority carriers that are the electrons that are present in the p-type material. So, the electrons get accumulated here because of the field. These are the minority electrons in the p type substrate. And so, this minority carriers electrons contribute uh, uh, these minority carriers form a channel between these two n type regions. Therefore, this p type semiconductor acts like an n type semiconductor bar around this channel, around this region close to the gate. Hence, when you apply some potential difference, some current flows through this channel. So, naturally, so this current depends on this potential because this potential is responsible for the accumulation of the electrons around the gate region. And so this, since this is n type, this is n type and this one acts like an n type semiconductor. Now, uh, it is similar to that of a JFET, 
and a, a net contacts. Now, if this positive potential is further increased, you expect a concentration of electrons over here to increase and the resistivity of the channel goes down and then more amount of current flows for the same voltage here. Hence, the characteristics of such a device is like this. As VGS is increased, the current ID increases. And beyond certain potential, so this current attains a, a, a saturated level, like this, the, the current uh, uh, remains constant. For the same reasons I have explained with depletion mode MOSFETs. So, with again negative potential, I repeat, because of the negative potential between the drain and gate, although gate is positive with respect to source, uh, with respect to drain, it becomes negative with large drain potential. So, this becomes again uh, the gate becomes negative biased compared to the drain and as a result this side the electrons are repelled from the gate region and you have the channel, uh, uh, the channel dimensions decreasing or the charge carriers carrier concentration decreasing. As a result the current attains a constant value. And at zero potential, the gate to source potential, there is no channel current is zero. And even with some positive potential like a low positive potential like 1 volt, the concentration of the electrons may not be sufficient enough to have an appreciable current flow. Therefore, a certain uh, threshold voltage exists below which the current is almost 0. Only when VGS is beyond the threshold voltage. there would be uh, current flowing. And here also you have the ohmic region for low drain to source voltages. It acts like a resistance whose resistivity depends on the positive supply applied over here. Okay, therefore, the characteristics is like this. And the transfer characteristics is naturally uh, has the same shape as that of the FET. Then what is the difference between an enhanced mode PET and a depletion mode PET? Well, this uh, the enhanced mode PET MOSFET works for positive gate to source potentials and the depletion mode PET works for negative drain to uh, negative gate to source potential. How is it possible? Because of this construction. Uh, similar to FET in this particular case and the construction are different from the former in this particular case. Because of the construction difference, the, it uh, works in this fashion. Uh, there is a question here, how does the thickness of the P substrate affects? First of all, if the P substrate dimensions are large, then you expect the total number of carriers that are available here as large and these carriers uh, do accumulate here and you can have a large amount of current. With the doping concentration of P type fixed, with the increased size, you can have large concentration here. With decreased size, the concentration cannot be that large. to the left of N side and to the right of this. So, this does not have uh, any additional uh, effect. This has negligible effect on the uh, on the performance of the, uh, the MOSFET. 
usually this way construction is easier. Okay, let me take this up, uh, opportunity to explain about how such devices are constructed. First, we take a semiconducting material, a P type semiconducting material and we place some mask over it and dope a pentavalent material. When you dope pentavalent material around this region, you have n type regions formed. So, this kind of construction is much easier than really having a, a separate n type material and then uh, chipping off portion of it and then embedding that into this. And that is drain to drain and uh, source, the characteristics differ by means of the concentration. On the drain side and the source side, the concentration usually differs and uh, that is purposefully made to make the, uh, the current more and more flat. Okay. So, we shall discuss about biasing of fats and transistors in the next class. Thank <laughs> you.